Shows me this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. How is everybody? Blessed. Absolutely glad everybody's here. Begin with a few announcements and some things everybody needs to be aware of and some prayer requests. Uh, Vacation Bible School starts uh, next Sunday, July 24th uh, through the 27th. Uh, we need paper towel rolls, not rolls of paper towels. We need the cardboard tube. Uh, if, if you can help us with that, please... Uh, uh, bring those uh, paper towel rolls uh, for VBS crafts. Uh, let's see. Uh, we, we are not going to do any decorating tonight for VBS uh, because of uh, the funeral that's going to be here on Friday. Uh, so we'll have to ramp it up good uh, a little bit next week. Now, teachers, if you want to work in your, your classrooms, that's, that's good. Uh, we're not going to do anything out there or in here. All right. Uh, food for Friends uh, is tomorrow. Uh, if you can help us unload the truck, be here at the building by 10 o'clock. Uh, if you can help put out boxes uh, in the cars as people uh, arrive for their pickup, be here between 11.30 and 3 o'clock. Anytime between 11.30 and 3 o'clock. We really need all the help that we can get, uh, and we appreciate uh, all of that. Um, in class tonight, there's going to be a, a, a few cards that uh, are going to be uh, sent around uh, to uh, uh, some of our visitors who have been with us uh, a couple of times in the past. We want to encourage them. Uh, so those cards will be going around uh, during class. Uh, also, after class is over, after the class in here and Bible classes for our kids are over, encourage everybody to come back in here. Uh, Alan Jones is going to be rebaptized. He wants to be rebaptized tonight, so we're going to do that uh, after classes uh, are over. So please uh, remain for that. All right, uh, we express our sympathies and our love to uh, the family of Betty Gauntney. She passed away uh, earlier this week. Her funeral service is here at the building on Friday, uh, this Friday at 1 o'clock. Uh, for visitation, the service is at 2 o'clock, so please keep uh, this family in your prayers. Uh, talk to Shirley Spiva today. Um, she didn't really have a good day, uh, so please remember her in your prayers. Uh, remember Tall Karen Pierce as well. Uh, and also, uh, Dennis and Ronzana both have COVID, so they're at home. Uh, please remember uh, both of them. Uh, Montez Grissett's son, Benjamin, uh, had successful surgery on his shoulder. Uh, he started physical therapy today, uh, and he'll do that two or three times a week for about two months. So please uh, remember uh, Montez and her family, especially her son, Benjamin. A lot of people are shut in. A lot of people are battling uh, various illnesses, uh, seasonal issues, uh, battling cancer, uh, grieving uh, loved ones. Uh, so please remember uh, all of these families. If you have a prayer request or an announcement or something, just write it down, give it to Shanna or myself. We'll make sure that it does get uh, announced. All right. Um, Frank, yes. She had wanted me to say it, but Kathy's had for 65 years a tune up, and they found she needs a new ball and socket in her hip, and they're going to do that Monday. All right. All right. All right, so they're going to take care of that on Monday. I believe I heard an enterprise. Hit him again. Okay. All right. All right. So y'all remember? Go ahead. Okay. All right. If y'all didn't hear that, there's going to be a meal for um, uh, the family here at the church building at 11 o'clock. Uh, ladies, y'all see Elaine? Y'all can coordinate everything. All right. Um, Jay, are you leading singing tonight? Or Scott, are you ready? Richard, you ready? 
Okay, y'all must have swapped or something. Okay, good. All right, so Richard's going to lead us in our singing. And uh, uh, then I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ralph, if you don't mind, if you'll dismiss us in prayer in just a few moments. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love, for your tender mercy, dear God, for the opportunity that we have uh, to assemble together, to be here, uh, to study from your word, uh, to fellowship, and to be encouraged one with another. Father, we pray that uh, you'll be with our Bible class teachers tonight as they have prepared themselves to present your word to us. Father, we pray that you'll be with us as students that will listen and learn, uh, be active and engage in those classes that we might gain uh, the most that we can from our time together uh, tonight. Uh, Father, we pray uh, especially tonight for uh, this, uh, the family of uh, uh, Betty Gauntney, dear God. We thank you for her life, for her legacy, for her love that she has for, for each and every one, and especially for you, dear God. We pray that you'll bless them, comfort them during this time. Uh, Father, we just pray that you'll be with the, the family as they travel to be here for uh, her service later this week. Uh, Father, we pray for those who are hurting, those who are sick. Uh, dear God, we continue to pray for Shirley Spivey and for uh, Karen Pierce and, and many others who are uh, battling illnesses of various kinds. Dear God, we pray that you'll bless them, uh, help them to heal and to recover, to regain a good measure of their health. Uh, Father, we also continue to, uh, to pray for those who are battling with uh, COVID. Uh, dear God, we pray that you'll be with uh, each of them. We pray that you'll be with Dennis and Ronzana, dear God, and help them uh, to uh, recover from uh, COVID uh, quickly. Dear God, we, we pray for uh, those who are recovering from surgeries uh, and procedures that they've had recently. Dear God, we, we pray for uh, Brother Carl as he recovers uh, from his foot surgery. Dear God, we thank you for the recovery that he is making and just pray you continue to be with him. We pray that you be with Benjamin as he uh, recovers and uh, deals with uh, physical therapy on his shoulder. Dear God, we pray for uh, success uh, in, in that uh, rehab there. Father, we just uh, continue to pray for so many others that are on our hearts, on our minds, dear God, who are uh, dealing with various situations. And we know, dear God, that you are the God of all comfort, that you're the God of grace and mercy. And Father, we pray that you'll bless them as only you can. Dear God, we pray for the opportunity to, to serve and to be uh, a strong shoulder, a source of encouragement to uh, so many uh, around us who are hurting and, and going through difficult times. Uh, we just pray for those opportunities. We pray for compassion uh, and for the, the will and the strength uh, to be there for them uh, at any time that we have. Dear God, we pray uh, that you will uh, be with us as a congregation as we go about the good works that are being done. We pray for our uh, Food for Friends program that's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, we pray for good success and for good turnout to help us in this good work and uh, pray that many can be helped uh, in, in their time of need through this good food program. Uh, Father, we pray for our country, and we pray that you'll be with our leaders. We pray that you'll help them to uh, look to you for wisdom and for guidance, that we might return uh, back to you. Uh, dear God, we thank you tonight most of all for your son Jesus. We thank you for his love. We thank you for the sacrifice that he's made for us at the cross. We pray tonight, dear God, that uh, you'll forgive us for our sins. We know that we often fall short of what you'd have us to be. And uh, dear God, we just pray that you'll forgive us and help us to be uh, more like your son, Jesus. For it's through him we pray. Amen.
Ken, it's good to see everybody here tonight. What an opportunity we do have in the middle of the week uh, to uh, come together to recharge our spiritual batteries, to be encouraged uh, with each other as we uh, uh, study the Word of God together and uh, draw closer to Him. This afternoon, I was reminded of a scripture that we're all familiar with in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We never want to underestimate or, or neutralize, if you will, the, the power of the gospel. Uh, that gospel message is God's power for the purpose of salvation. Not, not just for us, but for, for everyone and anyone, as Paul said, who will believe. Who will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who will obey that gospel message. So we want to make sure that uh, as we study the word of God together, we remember uh, the power of that gospel message. Uh, the power is found in the death, burial, and the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ. And as we go out into our world, out into our mission field, that's exactly what people need to hear and know. They need to know that saving message. So Paul said in Romans 1.15 that he was ready to preach the gospel to those who were in Rome. We need to be ready uh, as well uh, to share the message of the gospel uh, with a lost and dying world because it is the only power uh, that, that God has given to us uh, that can, can bring about salvation. So when we think about the uh, saving message of the gospel, it's important for us to uh, uh, make sure tonight in, in the opportunity we have to make sure that we're ready, that we're growing in our knowledge and our understanding of truth, and that we are ready uh, to stand before a holy God because one day we will. Whether we like it or not, one day we're going to stand before God and we'll give an account of ourselves uh, to Him. Whether we've obeyed the gospel or whether we haven't obeyed the gospel, whether we've been faithful or unfaithful, we're going to stand before God. Maybe tonight in your own heart, in your own life, you realize, hey, I haven't been as faithful as a Christian as I know I need to be. There's sin in my life. I need to get rid of it. I need to repent. I need to make it right. Maybe tonight you've never obeyed the gospel. Whatever your need is, tonight we're going to sing this invitation song. If we can encourage you, if we can help you in some way, uh, just come and let us know how as we stand together and sing.
thank you so much for this congregation that meets this place. We thank you for the love they show, and we thank you for the strength that they show in, in doing your will. Father, be with us as we go to our classes now. Help open our minds and our hearts to your word, and let us live it out each day before man. These things we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. While they're passing that out, I wanted to thank Frankie for jumping up top and filling in in a pinch. I looked around and I'm like, I have nobody I don't think that's ever been up there. And so uh, I just thought, okay, Frankie looks like the smartest one around. I'm just going to grab him. So uh, thank you very much for running the... Uh, slideshow or uh, PowerPoint, I think that's what that's called anymore, up there uh, for the singing. And I know I'm down for leading the singing one Wednesday this month, so I may have jumped on Scott's day, uh, but if I did, Scott's happy about it back there. He's like, that, that's fine, no problem. So last week, uh, uh, or was, no, it wasn't last week because we had, or it was, I'm trying to remember uh, our singing nights. When the singing nights uh, uh, comes in on the Wednesday evenings, it throws my brain off. It don't take a lot. But so la it was last week that we was uh, uh, talking about um, the different aspects of uh, abortion, suicide, or assisted uh, death, and so forth. And so I uh, mentioned that we was going to uh, discuss is there life after death this week and at the top of your handout it should have uh, I believe I put Job 14 14 uh, if someone would go ahead and uh, start reading that and we'll dive into our lesson Okay. If a man dies, shall he live again? Simply put, is there life after death? This has been a question as old as man all the way back through time. Um, people would maybe just stand around gravesides of loved ones and they would have to sit there wonder sometimes, is this it? Have you ever stood at a, a graveside uh, and wondered in your own mind where they at, what they're doing, what is happening since they're not with us anymore? And I think that all of us at different points in our lives, we would have questions like that or similar to that about life after death. This question has actually been gone through every culture as far back as you can go uh, that they all 
believe in a life after death. And every religion, uh, there is always that idea that there's something more than what we are, have and doing here. So, what was that old phrase? Uh, I remember as a kid, uh, maybe, or, or a young person coming up, uh, talking about life af after death, and I remember somebody saying, uh, are we like Rover, just dead all over? You know, some people believe that when you die, that's it. You just cease to exist. And to me, that's just a sad thought. And I would think to most everybody else too. So with this, we want to discuss some things about um, life after death. And the first thing uh, that I want to mention, I know when we was eating at Rancho after uh, uh, Wednesday Bible class last week, we sat down and we was talking about different things. And Trippy brought up something that uh, changed the direction of where I took the lesson. Uh, and I, th I have thought about this and heard folks, but Trippy, uh, when he said life after death, he brought up the point that he knows of a person, and I won't give any details of that way, that like let's just say they had some kind of procedure and they flatlined. So by medical world, this person was dead. When you flatline, it may not be that you can't come back, but they consider you dead and they start working on the process of reviving. And during this episode, um, the woman had some, oh, I done said something more than what I was supposed to say, but the person had, uh, let's just say a vision. Actually had a vision that she believed that, we'll just say the long tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel, and that she died and met God or met Jesus, I forget how it went, and from there that changed her life because she was revived and obviously still with us, uh, but that side of the story kind of intrigued my mind. Has anybody, I'm, I'm curious of this one, has anybody else out there had heard or know of somebody and it, you know you don't have to say a friend of mine if it was you but because uh, we actually have some answers for some of this but uh, had anybody that has experienced anything similar to this some kind of out of body we'll just call it experience okay one two okay maybe a third one I thought I saw a quick hand okay uh, is there anything that you'd share with us on that Well, and I didn't even uh, make the connection uh, when I saw, saw you guys come in 
uh, that you was here because some of the things that I avoided in this lesson dealt with some of the medical and some, you, you'll know some of these. I touched a few little things and just being, you know, uh, falling off the stump about that side of it, uh, this is just what I've seen through digging and researching a little bit myself. So, uh, anybody else have anything that they know of somebody that has had some type of an experience like this? Okay. You know, there's a lot of things along those lines. Uh, I, we was talking the other day. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, this was something that a physician said, and you're, you're going to know um, that you told this to me when I repeat it. But um, sometimes people that are on the verge of death, they get kind of this last burst of um, cognitivity to them and they kind of rally with their family and they have one last goodbye where the, the mental state and everything is there and then not too far longer than they pass. Uh, things like that are extremely common. Um, not quite in the death side, but has anybody ever had like, um, let me see, what would be those things called? Like uh, maybe, I think you would say lucid dreams or something where you kind of picture yourself. I, I'll just show you, I think this would be kind of like when you're in close to REM sleep or you know, kind of half in, half out. Sometimes you get to dreaming. And I remember uh, that I had two dreams that they was kind of a recurring dream. And I always wanted to have a third one because I wanted to get better at it. But I actually had a dream of flying. And, you know, if you watch some kind of a special uh, on some things like this, you'll see where they depict somebody up here looking at their body or maybe uh, they was on the operating table and then they come up and then they see themselves or things maybe around the operating room and I'm sure there's stories that you could you know share with some of that but you know the idea of the I don't know what to call it other than spirit being separated from the body is a common thing that you would hear in a lot of people in this just in the world and it doesn't matter if they're religious or not uh, so I always kind of have heard and thought about that and didn't put much stock into it you know for years I've heard people say well we you know they seen a light at the end of the tunnel well you know, as a surgeon, you know, you would have to have good light. So they, you know, people would try to explain this away and say, okay, you're just, uh, light can even be so bright that it goes through your eyelids. And so you would be in the, you know, eyes closed, but you would still be seeing light. And so there's been all kinds of things to try to explain this. Uh, and I'm sure there's, there's so much that, we just don't know. So, uh, there was this thing that says about a third of people that have near-death near death experience has some sort of a vision or um, something that, I guess, changes them where they feel like that they was separated from their body at some point. And through all the different religions, uh, when I've done a bunch of uh, searching, you find people that said, oh, I talked to Jesus. 
And then somebody else said, I talked to God. And then others, well, I talked to Mohammed or Buddha. And uh, each time, you know, at this occurred, they, the general consensus was, I'm not finished for with you. You have to go back. And so that, I think there's enough uh, accounts of this out there that we need to at least look at a little bit of this for a moment. There is, uh, who's ever watched, what's that movie, Doctor Strange? Uh, it is a Marvel uh, Universe movie. Okay, so we don't have a lot of superhero fans. Okay, Andy has. Uh, Andy, appreciate you, man. Uh, so, basically, if you're a Marvel, Marvel fan or superheroes, uh, this dude named jo Dr. Strange, uh, he is able to astral project his body or himself out of his body. Now, and this is actually, I come to find out, this is a thing now, y'all. Uh, people try to do this where they say, okay, I can project my whatever other type of body out and my body stays here and then I can go other places and I can sit up here and I can watch myself. Now, you may kind of be thinking, well, what does this have to do with is there life after death? Uh, and, but in their minds, they're whatever being the soul has left their body okay so they're, they're actually uh, are trying to say that some kind of uh, trance or whatever that they go into that they can leave their body and go to a different plane realm or something and so in their minds that's similar to like life after death your, your body is going to a different place or your your essence we'll just call it and so I thought this was strange because that was just where Trippy went straight right off the bat that when I said something about life after death out of body experiences so uh, on your sheet well there was, there was a, a book I was going to mention there's this person named Jade, Jade Shaw she uh, she read this uh, uh, book that's called Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe and it's talking about this astral projection and she's actually supposed to be a teacher of this now what people want to learn it just blows my mind but uh, I did still find it interesting but on the outline it talks about what answers does science have so specifically on life after death uh, science you know you can't deal with uh, uh, morals values purposes life after death isn't really something uh, that can necessarily be observed or repeated in a laboratory or in a controlled environment that is not something science really gives us any real answers to but what I did want to talk about for just a moment was the things that in the medical world uh, science how some of these um, out of body experiences and so forth can be somewhat explained when you look at uh, what they call a disturbance and I'm going to try to get this road, words right. If I don't get it and you know it, you correct me. Uh, disturbance in the temporal per, per, parietal cortex. Anyways, it's a place in your brain that if this is stimulated, and it's just because they, this is something that they can do in a lab. And if it's stimulated, and I ain't going to try to figure out how much shocks they do to it, but on the left side it alters people's perception of time and it produces the feeling like I said I had a dream of flying so 
there's a certain part of the brain, if it has some kind of stimulation, that's kind of what happens. Uh, and if they stimulate this to the right side, people feel like they communicate with spirits or they hear voices. So that's something that science can tell for maybe some of these events that people do have in their life. Uh, there are some uh, drugs. There's one, uh, ketamine, I think it's like a, uh, um, what you call that, make you sleepy thing, uh, uh, anesthesia type drug. And they said uh, it has side effects similar to that. There was another one called DMT, and it had a name about that long, so I just wrote down DMT. And it says about half the people that receive this particular drug have had religious experiences kind of out of body with non-human beings in that disembodied state. So basically, drugs will mess up your mind uh, is the way that I'm going to say that. Since we're talking about drugs... Uh, in the 70s, maybe still around now, LSD. You know, that's kind of a, what folks talk about, tripping drug. You know, folks see things that aren't there. Or, okay, so when things like that happen, there's something going on with that individual that triggers something in the mind that encourages these types of feelings and emotions and thoughts. So, we're going to leave, uh, well, I did, we'll say this last thing. Uh, out, of, out of body may also, uh, well, no, no. Let's go with this. The brain has like one billion cells, and in those one billion cells, you got like one trillion connections. Now, I'm depending on the doctors for this. So, within that, all those connections and the way this fires, when something happens to an individual, there's a gazillion different ways that, that can go. So we all know how complex the body is and there's just no way of knowing how somebody will or won't react to some of this. Charles. I'll just give you my opinion. Okay, opinions are good. Absolutely. But my own definition of death is you did. <laughs> the other things happened before that. Right. You come back and remember. Because just the definition of death it just means that's over. That's right. You know, uh, many of us have lost uh, one or both parents. Uh, and I remember when my mom passed, you know, I, was, I showed up. Uh, I was there just before she passed, and then I w went back to the house, and I, uh, when I come back, she had already gone. When she was laying there on the floor, like Charles says, dead is dead. At that point, no life, and the uh, ambulance, everybody tried all the resuscitation, and she was just gone. And when you're completely gone, you're completely gone. There is no coming back from that one. And uh, with the physician amongst us, we could uh, get educated about a lot of, you know, the brain. It, it can function for a little while without the oxygen, but it starts depleting. And at some point, your brain's going to cease to be there. It's just going to finally get to the point that ultimately, I guess, brain damage or it's just gone too far, it can't come back. So, the last point is with all of this back and forth about questions, and it's been in every culture and religion and all these experiences people have, what does Jesus say about this? So, if you can go ahead and start kind of getting ahead a little bit on some of the verses, we're going to go through and kind of catch some of this uh, maybe relatively quickly. And uh, Matthew 12, 32, who has that one? Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. OK. 
Okay. So Jesus is already talking about right here in the age to come. Now, that we normally talk about this verse when we're talking about uh, sinning against the Holy Spirit. But Jesus is immediately saying there is an age to come. So continue on uh, over Matthew 19, 24. Somebody catch that, please. Okay. Uh, in verse 20, no, that's okay. In 25, I'm, I'm, I'm having to think here. This is when they turned back around and said, Who can be saved? And uh, when Peter turned back around and said to Christ, You know, we left all to follow thee, in verse, like, I think, 27. And then. Verse 29, that's where we are ultimately fixing to get to. Somebody catch that one. As we're talking through here, we read that Christ has already talked about the world to come. It's talking about um, that you um, need to leave all of these things. And then verse 29 said you would be repaid with eternal life. And so immediately again, Jesus talks about another world, another dimension we all know is heaven. Uh, go ahead and catch Ephesians 1.21. Okay, I can get it. It says, uh, through the Apostle Paul, he speaks... See, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world uh, that which is to come. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.8 basically says the same thing about bodily exercise, prophets, little, uh, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. So immediately all of these verses is talking about something that is still sitting out there waiting for us. What is going to be happening? And uh, verse 29 back over Matthew 19 specifically mentions eternal life. So with this, you know, we have some people that has believed like um, reincarnation and so forth that, you know, you might come back as uh, an animal or I don't know there was some song that talked about even coming back as a single drop of rain or something uh, but it was an old country song I think it was uh, some of the cowboy guys um, that did that one but you know the so many of the other religions of the eastern religions of the world when it talks about you know, they believe that we're here on this spot and we're just going to come back again and come back again. And some of them say, well, you know, if you uh, do good in this life, maybe you'll go up on that chain a little bit more each time. But if you go down from being a person, that's all there is is down. That can't be true. What Christ says and that is that world to come. It has nothing to do with the world that we're in right now. So, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19. Somebody take that one, please. Okay. 
Okay, so if we only have this world and we're wrong with believing there's another world to come, he says we are the most pitiful of everybody. We have nothing to actually uh, to look forward to except uh, basically what we have. And so we have to believe and know that the, uh, what is to come is what we're actually working for. Uh, there's several more verses through here on this. Let me read just a little bit more on that one in 1 first, first Corinthians uh, 15. Let's go ahead and start in uh, verse 20. It says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now resurrection from the dead has begun through another. Just as one dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone belongs to Christ, will be given, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given life or new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised at the first of the harvest then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come and, when, uh, and he will turn the kingdom over to his father, having destroyed every ruler and, every, or, and, and authority and power. For Christ must reign until uh, he humbles all enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So that was through verse 26. So Christ is given basically the road for us. He's opening the path. He is the, carries the preeminence and basically everything. He is our direction for this. Uh, he also promised, uh, somebody read John, well, no, we did, I miss, I miss Matthew. 22, Matthew 22, verse 31. Somebody catch that one for me. 22, 31. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? Okay. So, we're just talking about the resurrection, and he's talking about it again. Christ, he isn't talking about this as anything that may could happen. It has happened and will continue to happen. He broke down all the walls. He is the first of all of this. It is not a possibly or maybe something. This is something that will happen. Uh, I think it's uh, John 5, 20, uh, 5 and 6. It says uh, uh, he promised an hour when all that are in their graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They have done good unto the resurrection of life, he said, and they have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So at this point, we get that little inkling of at this point you have a resurrection, but there's a place where people are going to go from that, one to life, one to damnation. So... We have to, uh, I'm going to kind of catch this off here in a second. Uh, we have to remember that Christ has, when he, when he teaches and says things, it is factual. It is not nothing that is maybe or a hope so. I uh, work with a dude that one of his favorite sayings is uh, hope is not a plan, okay? And basically he's saying, well, I hope we can get this done. Well, now you gotta have a better plan than that. Christ has the plan. And he says, everyone that's in him is gonna follow in that, those same steps, resurrection into life. So, wrapping this up, um, let me see how I want to take 
Let's do this. Uh, in the Bible, the word heaven, uh, well, you have heaven or hell as your only two possibilities. The word heaven appears 582 times. Now, this is actually in the King James Bible. Uh, and that would be uh, 327 times in the Old Testament, 255 times in the New Testament. So, heaven is spoken of throughout the Bible as a grabbable place. You will be there. It's something you can grasp. And hell uh, actually has four different words that's in the uh, King James Version. You've probably heard all this before. Sheol, uh, Sheol, Ol, I can't say some of these with, some of, with this, but uh, basically mean the unseen world, uh, but sometimes graves. You got Hades, which is a Greek equivalent for the word Sheol. You got Tartarus. And that one's only found in Second Peter, uh, verse two, two, four, and it basically Tartarus is a place where wicked go. That's how that's referred to. Uh, they wait and are basically imprisoned. Uh, Gehenna uh, or Gehenna is most often refer, refers to eternal place of punishment for the wicked. Also, um, and Jesus had used the word Gehenna 11 different times. So um, there is a poll that was taken, you know, those Gallup polls that happens. And I found this interesting. It said, um, of all the people that they took the poll for, um, they said that 77% believe people people believe of the poll that they believe that there is a heaven so they say and do you believe in heaven that 77 percent says yes of that 77 percent 76 percent people think that they have a good to excellent chance of making it there and when they ask the same question about hell it dropped off only about 58 percent of the people believe that there really is a place of hell and 6% thought that they would be likely to go there so the numbers of this is just totally skewed heaven is real hell is real life after death is real Jesus spoke of it the whole time let's go ahead and read uh, Hebrews 9.27 we'll wrap this up Somebody have that one. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after that, or after this, the judgment. <clears throat> okay. So, we're going to die once. We got the judgment right after that. And beyond judgment, we have one or two places that we have waiting for us. It's going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. We're going to go ahead and stop. Does anybody have any comments, statements, questions? Grievances, complaints. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, good attention. Uh, hang out for just a moment. We uh, are going to be having the uh, young people to come back in. Class should be getting over for them. Um, <clears throat> we'll have a quick word of prayer while they get in, out, and uh, y'all just remain here for just a moment. Bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the time you've allowed us to come together to uh, look at a portion of your word. We pray, Father, that you love us so much and you take care of us the way that you do. We pray that uh, we realize, Father, that all the uh, preparations that has been made for us, that uh, we, uh, through following your word, that we will have eternal life with you one day. We pray that we can... Uh, share that with more and more people uh, that we come in contact with daily and that uh, the world can see that there uh, is a concern uh, that needs to be thought about for afterlife. We pray, Father, that uh, you...
us in the things that we do right. Defeat us when we're wrong. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Have the kids been turned loose?
can wash all 